Okay, in this video, we're going to finish up um, our discussion of chapter 17 material and 1046 material overall. Um, and uh, uh, this is going to focus on um, the, the cell potentials we talked about last time uh, and how we can relate them to things we've talked about um, both in the uh, near and, and distant past uh, to, to things like delta G and equilibrium constants. Um, learning outcomes, expectations, there aren't many here, uh, but, but these are the things that we ultimately want you to be able to um, to, to show us that you, you can do or that you know. Um, and this is again going to uh, uh, summarize. Sorry, this is going to uh, be where we end for the semester. So just to recap what we did last time, um, if I took two half cells here, this is a very specific copper silver half cell, and I hooked up a voltmeter to those half cells, um, what I uh, would notice is that my voltmeter reads a, a voltage. Um, that voltage is what we refer to as the cell potential or the electrical potential. Uh, and this is ultimately a, a, a measure of how much energy we can get per unit charge, so per uh, uh, electron essentially, um, that, that is um, uh, coming from a spontaneous movement of electrons from one place to another from that redox reaction. Um, this uh, magnitude of this voltage is going to be dictated by the chemistry involved, so it's going to change with the, the species being oxidized and the species being reduced. Um, so specific um, uh, you know, or generic uh, examples here, the thing that's being oxidized is going to uh, lose electrons, so go from, uh, in this case, a zero oxidation state to a plus one. The thing that's being reduced is going to gain electrons, you know, again, this uh, case going from a plus one oxidation state to zero. Um, the, the cell, the, the half cell associated with oxidation is what we call the anode. The half cell associated with reduction is called the cathode. And the overall potential that we're going to measure, that cell potential, is a difference between the, uh, the potentials at those half cells. There's no absolute energy scale, um, so we have to, to talk about a difference in, uh, in, in potential. Um, so the, the thing that we would do, and this is a, a conventional notation, we'll kind of kick the tires on uh, as we walk through, um, is take that potential for the cathode uh, and subtract from it the potential for the anode. Um, so driving force, uh, the cell potential is dictated by the chemistry, so the nature of the half reactions. Um, it depends on both the, uh, the chemistry, so what is there and, and how much is there, the concentration. Um, uh, in order to, to kind of um, make sure we're, um, you know, almost literally referencing the same thing, um, we, we have, and, and we being the, you know, uh, um, proverbial we, right, there, there's a, um, a conventional set of standard potentials, notice that degree symbol. Uh, reminder, we've seen this before, Our standard conditions are everything at one molar, everything at one atmosphere, everything being gases at one atmosphere. Um, temperature um, is, is a, a, a constant fixed uh, parameter, usually uh, 25 degrees Celsius. Um, and, and this is going to have units of volts or millivolts, um, uh, and, you know, depending on the magnitude and, and you know, uh, opinion. Um, so the standard cell potential is going to be the standard uh, potential at the cathode minus the standard potential at the anode. Um, I can measure this, at least in theory, by hooking up a voltmeter to those two half cells, as long as those two half cells are under standard conditions. Um, I, would, I would measure the standard potential difference. Um, and then from that, I can get these relative values, at least in theory. So what we do, again, this apples to apples comparison, and this is, um, this is a conventional agreement um, that, that we sort of uh, are, are riding on the coattails of. Um, uh, is, is a, a very specific reaction is set at a reduction potential of zero volts. Um, and the specific reaction that has been set at zero volts um, is the reduction of uh, H plus ions, so one molar HCl, note the standard conditions there, one molar concentration. Um, so those H, remember HCl is a strong acid, so HCl in solution would not be HCl, excuse me, it would be H plus and Cl minus. So in this reaction, those H plus ions are able to accept electrons to be reduced and when they accept the electrons they're becoming H2 gas again note the standard conditions one atmosphere pressure um, the platinum electrode here just a quick aside um, uh, platinum is an inert metal that's why uh, jewelry is often made of platinum um, it's a, a, a metal that doesn't react but it is a good conductor um, so this would um, platinum is a common choice of electrode uh, when we need a, a solid surface 
over which the electrons can flow when the reaction doesn't involve a solid. So this would be H plus plus two electrons making H2 gas. Uh, the platinum electrode is, is literally just a solid surface over which those electrons can flow. So this um, setup, uh, this is what's referred to as the standard hydrogen electrode, the SHE, and it has been given, <laughs> uh, and, and this is a convention, it's been assigned an oxidation, uh, sorry, a, a potential of zero volts. So if we kind of zoomed in here, what's happening, again, that platinum is just a source of the electron transfer. Um, the H plus ions in that one molar HCl solution are uh, accepting electrons uh, from the platinum surface and in the process becoming H2 gas. So oxidation number plus one to zero for that uh, free element H2 gas. Uh, and this has been assigned a, a potential of zero volts. So going back to um, what we can do with this, if I take... Uh, uh, another half cell, in this case zinc, and I hook it up to the standard hydrogen electrode. The anode is the site of oxidation, so here zinc is giving up electrons to become zinc 2 plus. Um, the cathode, the site of reduction, those H plus ions are accepting electrons to become H2 gas. Um, uh, that voltmeter that I can read, at least in theory, I can measure that overall cell potential. And since I know that my standard hydrogen electrode has a reduction potential of zero, I can infer what zinc must be. So uh, because I measured 0.6 volts and I know, or by definition, have defined this to be zero, uh, then the zinc half cell has a standard reduction potential of negative 0.76 volts. So that's just plugging into this equation. If I did the same thing for copper, not going to reinvent the wheel here, but this is my standard hydrogen electrode. Here's my copper uh, electrode. At the anode, uh, we've got our standard hydrogen electrode reaction. At the cathode, we've got our copper. I read 0.34. I plug this in uh, and I get that the copper half cell is 0.34. Um, what this lets me do, and this, this sort of have a, has a, a third law of thermodynamics um, uh, feel to it, in my opinion. Um, if, you know, this was 0.34 with respect to this, and if my zinc was negative 0.76 with respect to that, then I can combine them. And if I imagine, I think I have it in here somewhere, I uh, should have had it immediately, but if I imagine taking that zinc and the copper half cell, um, I could then predict what E cell would be based on those 0.34 and negative 0.76. I'll do that in a second. Um, uh, what these are called, so for the zinc um, here, is it on here, zinc negative 0.76, uh, copper 0.34, um, these are what are referred to as the standard reduction potentials. Um, note a couple of things, the standard reduction potential for hydrogen, the standard hydrogen electrode is zero, that's by definition. The more positive something is, the more easily it is reduced, so the more positive something is, um, it was reduced by the standard hydrogen electrode. The more negative it is, it was oxidized by the standard hydrogen electrode using that oxidized uh, agent language. If it's more easily reduced, if it's, it pr prefers to be reduced, it's gonna be better at oxidizing, a better oxidizing agent and, and vice versa. If it's more easily oxidized, it's gonna be better at reducing. Um, and so what we can kind of see here is the preference, this is all driving forces, uh, but the preference for electrons moving from one place to another. Um, lithium would prefer to be oxidized. Lithium would prefer to give up its electrons, um, whereas fluorine would prefer to accept them. Uh, so if you put lithium and fluorine next to each other, uh, you expect fluorine to be reduced and lithium to be oxidized, and we can make that comparison with any of these. Um, so the, the thing I was trying to say before, I just got ahead of myself, if you combine any of these two, you can calculate that cell potential. So what, would you, what you would do is find the potential uh, for each reduction half reaction, um, do the anode minus the cathode math, or cathode, excuse me, minus the anode math to calculate um, uh, the standard cell potential. Um, and then um, uh, just uh, an aside, these are oh, what we call intensive parameters. Um, so we don't need to um, uh, account for the fact that the stoichiometry might not be one to one. Um, we're literally going to take these values and subtract one from the other. Um, so for the zinc copper half cell uh, that we looked at from before, uh, we kind of justified or walked through the fact that um, we hook copper up with a standard hydrogen electrode, we get 0.34 volts. We hook the zinc up we get negative 0.76 volts, just meaning that uh, when I hooked the zinc up to the standard hydrogen electrode, the zinc was actually oxidized. 
um, whereas when I hooked copper up to the standard hydrogen electrode, copper was reduced. So that's the difference between the sign. So if I hook these two up together, put the zinc at the anode and copper at the cathode, um, I'm just going to take those two values from this table uh, and subtract them. So that copper uh, 0.34 minus the zinc negative 0.76 gets me the 1.1 volts. And if you go back to the video from the previous video to this, um, that was the very first galvanic cell we looked at um, where the, the potential difference between the copper and the zinc um, uh, standard uh, half cells was 1.1 volts. Um, the negative sign, this is just to note here, so the, the conventional um, uh, expression that we're going to use is take the reduction potential for the cathode, subtract the reduction potential for the anode, uh, and the negative sign here is the, the, the flipping, quote unquote flipping, of this reaction. The fact that zinc actually loses electrons, zinc is actually oxidized. Uh, the negative sign is going to be our, our flipping of that reaction. If, it, if it's negative 0.76 in one direction, it's going to be positive 0.76 in the other. Um, so uh, those are kind of how we might predict uh, the standard potential. That's all we, we've done here so far is just what, what would I predict on that voltmeter? I can use a table of standard production potentials to, to make that uh, calculation. Um, the last thing we're going to do is how do we tie this into what we've been doing in terms of uh, free energies and spontaneity and equilibrium. Um, so the same reaction, zinc and copper, here's that line notation that is really just a representation of this two half cell beaker setup if you know uh, how to translate that. Um, I would expect, if this is under standard conditions, I would expect this to uh, read, this voltmeter to read 1.1 volts. Um, uh, this is telling me that electrons are flowing. This is telling me that electrons are flowing in uh, a specific direction from the anode to the cathode. Um, like what we said with delta G is because I read a positive E naught, if my beaker setup is under standard conditions, I can justify that as spontaneity. But more practically, even if I'm not under standard conditions, I can read it as favorability. So sort of a, a, a distinction like we did with delta G and delta G naught. A positive E naught means it's positive, it's spontaneous, excuse me, under standard conditions, one molar concentrations, one atmosphere pressures. Um, uh, if delta E, uh, sorry, if uh, E naught is positive and I'm not under standard conditions, I can still read that as favorability. The products are favored uh, and vice versa. A negative E naught means that electrons are flowing uh, uh, spontaneously from the cathode to the anode or non-spontaneous from the anode to the cathode and in, in Con, uh, uh, comparatively, um, that the reaction is favorable in the reverse direction. Uh, for a chemical reaction with the left-right harpoon arrows, um, the reactants would be um, favored. So the, the, the kind of tie-in to what we've been talking about in Chapter 16 is that E0 a, 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 a gives me insight into this favorability, uh, just like delta G0 did and just like equilibrium constant K did. Um, but the, the thing that I, I'll at least try to convince you of is measuring uh, E naught is in a lot of cases um, easier than trying to measure uh, delta G naught or K directly. Uh, so the, rea the uh, equations that we're going to use, and, and again this is something you'll be given on an equation sheet so no need to memorize it. It does feel like it comes a little bit out of left field. Uh, but that delta G naught is equal to, uh, we talked about last time about negative RT natural log K but it is also equal to negative NF E naught, where the degree symbol indicates that hypothetical reference set of conditions, standard conditions. Um, delta G naught is the same standard Gibbs free energy change from uh, chapter 16. Uh, e naught is now the standard cell potential that we could imagine measuring or calculating from a table of standard production potentials. N is the number of stoichiometric uh, moles of electrons that are transferred. Uh, in the reaction, um, this is the thing that would be hard to see outright in a balanced chemical reaction, but if we kind of peeled away the curtain like we talked about last time and wrote out our two half cell reactions, we can we can better find that number. Uh, and F is a, a um, uh, excuse me, a statistical constant, it's the Faraday constant, and it is a, the charge that a mole of electrons carries. It uh, has a value of 9.648 times 10 to the 4 joules per mole. Uh, volts or coulomb per mole. Um, one thing important to note here is that uh, N and F are both positive quantities by definition. There's a negative sign out front, so the sign of delta G naught and E naught are opposite. If delta G naught is negative, that means E naught is positive. 
if delta G naught is positive, that means E naught is negative. Um, so what can I do with this? I said this a second ago, but I've got two expressions for delta G naught, one from last time, one from this time. Um, I can equate those two and I can solve, do some algebra. E naught is RT over NF natural log of K. So once I know one, I can calculate the other two, right? So um, we could go out of this any way I want. Um, if I know delta G naught, and, and to be clear, if I know the reaction I'm considering, um, I, I can calculate both E naught and K. If I know K and the reaction I'm considering, I can calculate delta G naught and E naught. And if I know E naught and the reaction I'm considering, I can calculate delta G naught and K. So uh, I've got math problems that I can work. The, the bigger thing I think to walk away from is just the, what it tells me. So if E naught, I think I have this here. If E naught is positive, that means delta G naught is negative. And either delta G naught being negative or E naught being positive tell me, tells me that the reaction is spontaneous in the forward direction, if and only if I'm under standard conditions, which I'm probably not most of the time, um, probably more importantly or practically useful um, is the favorability. So if these two statements are true, E naught is positive, delta G naught is negative, products are favored. The equilibrium constant will be greater than one. Uh, if delta G naught is positive and E naught is negative, this tells me that reactants are favored. The equilibrium constant will be less than one. And if you happen to be close to zero, close to a wash, right? The ch uh, standard Gibbs energy doesn't change much. The standard cell potential is close to zero. Uh, that would be a case where you're approaching the, the condition where products and reactants are sort of equally favored. Um, you're not gonna expect a, a, a huge um, surplus of products or reactants at equilibrium. So in summary, that cell potential is um, a, a measure of energy per charge available essentially for the redox reaction. Um, it tells me something about the driving force um, of, of that reaction, uh, whether electrons spontaneously want to or are going to move from one place to another, which place are they moving to from, uh, as well as the favorability. Um, we have to, um, uh, you know, reference some arbitrary um, ground zero essentially and that ground zero for us is the the standard hydrogen electrode uh, and, and because of that ground zero we can assign other cell potentials relative to that um, and again for me it has sort of that third law feel to it right um, uh, and or just think about you know, um, uh, literal altitudes, right? If I tell you the height of a mountain, um, it's referencing, you know, referencing uh, sea level. Um, you know, we do this all the time. We, we assign something zero feet uh, and we're referencing everything from that. Our ground zero for this uh, uh, is, is the, the standard hydrogen electrode. Uh, and then I think one of the really, really big important things if I could beg you to, to spend some time with um, is qualitatively being able to connect the sign of delta or sorry sign of e naught to both spontaneity under standard conditions favorability and being able to connect that uh, to to things we've already talked about before sorry i went to the wrong screen delta g naught and the magnitude of that equilibrium constant um, so again these are the things that uh, i want you to spend some time with um, these are the things that uh, we want you to, to be able to show uh, or do um, uh, for, for our final exam. Um, and with that, we are done. Um, so this is the last video. We'll spend time in class as always. Um, and I'll see you then.